How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Pickups. I'm Pocket and let's get right into it. So last week I had a good friend of mine named Grunkle Shenjohn uh, subscribe to me on Twitch at a tier 3 level. This allows him to pick 5 games from my collection to sponsor and I'm going to put a pocket with his name inside of those games. Now what does sponsoring one of my games do? Well it allows somebody to uh, acknowledge a particular video game in my collection that means something to that particular person. It could be a game of nostalgia, an appreciation for artwork, or just a fantastic game that should be recognized. Uh, what does that do for uh, this channel? Well, it's donations like uh, subscribing to me on Twitch or a small PayPal donation of $5, which will allow someone to pick a game to sponsor and that helps keep this channel going. So, Grunkle, thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. Let's go ahead and get right into it. And the first game that he has picked to sponsor is one of my favorite games on the Amiga. And that, now, an Amiga game, it being my favorite, I just discovered the Amiga. Living here in the United States, I never owned one growing up when I... Uh, when I had an Apple IIe, I only had the Apple IIe, and then we went immediately to a... 486 SX25 PC. And as much as I love those two, I'd never had a Commodore or a VIC-20 or an Amiga in my house. So these are, you know, uncharted territory for me. And I was just able to recently pick up these games. Now I played the IBM PC versions of these games, but when I saw them uh, for sale at a retro video game store called Retroid Games and Records in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, I had to pick these up such a wave of nostalgia. It's so funny to me that these games just recently got released on Steam. Uh, literally just, what, a, a day or two ago. Uh, and I picked these up last week. So that's that's kind of exciting for me to be able to uh, play these on my modern PC. Considering I don't own an Amiga yet, uh, that's actually really, really awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and stick one of these pockets here right inside that box. And I thank you ever so kindly, Grunkle. The other games that he has uh, decided to sponsor, they're also the SSI AD&D 2nd Edition Gold Box games. Uh, man, I have so much nostalgia right here. And I am very happy that Grunkle has decided to pick these up. This game is terrible on the NES, and I don't have high hopes for it here on the Amiga. <laughs> um, but it is from one of my favorite... Uh, uh, franchises, uh, the Dragonlance series by Margaret Royce and Tracy Hickman, so I mean, bad game or not, I still appreciate the series. And then lastly, Eye of the Beholder. How many different platforms was this game released on? Uh, Sega CD, Super Nintendo, those are the two that I'm aware of, uh, and now this. I'm wondering what the differences are. I don't honestly know. But, uh, it's still cool to have Another copy of a AD&D 2nd Edition. This is when I got into Dungeons & Dragons way back in the day. I know I'm showing my age here, but uh, way back in the day when I started playing in d d it was with 2nd Edition. I still have my arms and equipment guide, believe it or not. And the final game is uh, one of my all-time favorite series, uh, Ultima 5, Warriors of Destiny, for the Amiga. So, he gets to sponsor five games because, well... He's subscribed at a tier 3 level, which is the equivalent of $25. My goodness, this guy's crazy. But uh, thank you so much, Grunkle. I greatly appreciate your support. And hopefully you are pleased with your picks for sponsorship. Now, moving on to pickups. I have some more pickups that I got at Playthrough Convention in Raleigh. Um, not this past week, but the week before. And uh, I need to showcase those. I also went to... A, uh, a local video game store and uh, got some pickups there to show you. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll continue with the playthrough gaming convention pickups. Uh, only one 3DO game that I was able to get to add to my collection. It's sad considering that I only have, well, less than, we'll say, 15 games in my collection. Uh, but I started collecting 3DO complete in box and I'm going to try to continue that trend. Uh, so I got a light gun game. Uh, this is the last bounty hunter. 
for 3DO. Uh, unfortunately, want want no manual. It's very sad for me, um, uh, but I knew that going in, um, and I, I I thought about it long and hard. You know, the, the the important part for me is I want games that I can play, and because of the rising video game prices recently, I've I've had to cut some corners. So if I get a box in a game, that's great, and if it doesn't have the manual, well, that stinks. But you know, this collection is for me. And that's exactly what I want to use it for. Which means that if I have the box where I can just grab it off the shelf and take a look at the back of the cover and see if I want to play that game, and it contains the game, then it belongs in my collection. So that's why I went ahead and picked it up. I stopped at a, uh, a local video game store called Lost Ark Video Games while at playthrough. And the owner of the, uh, of the store is just such an incredible guy. And I, I really appreciate him uh, very much. He appreciates collectors and people that like to catalog and archive uh, moments in history. So he and I always have great conversations when we're speaking to one another. And I greatly appreciate what he, uh, what he does for me. Um, so any time that I'm in the area and I want to buy from him, I don't have any qualms with it. Uh, but he was at the convention selling stuff too, which was fantastic because he had two gigantic boxes of NES games. Now, I don't have a whole lot of NES games. When you're going for a full set and you only have half the set, there are plenty of holes to fill. So these two gigantic boxes of NES games had a big flyer on it that says, all games $5 each. Well, okay. Uh, now, typically, you know, back in the day, we used to pay one to two dollars for commons. That's not really the case anymore today. Uh, so to see that no matter what the game is, if it's in that box and it's five dollars, I'm gonna go sifting through that box in hopes that I can find any game that I don't already own yet in order to try to get closer to a complete set. And that's what I did. So I found Epic Swinner Games. Now I already have this. Um, in my collection, which is fine, because what I have in my collection is a, uh, a, a different copy. Now, I hate that the label is chewed up, but this is a variant of the same game. What do I mean by this? Well, this game that I already had in my collection, it has, on the back of it, three screws that hold the cartridge together, and two tabs up here at the top, here and here. This particular one, if we look at the difference, does not have three screws, it instead has five. One, two, three, four, five. And that is what makes it a, what they call a five screw variant. Now, from my understanding, five screw variants came out first before the three, three screw reprints. So that is the difference and why it is classified as a variant. So both of these games will be added to my collection. Which was really fortunate for me that he had a five screw variant. And I was able to pick that up. Next up, this is the only copy they had, so it's unfortunate. But, uh, you know, for five dollars, I can't complain too much. I have a little bit of work that I have to do to clean up this copy of Burger Time. I used to play this game quite often in the arcades. I, I don't recall ever playing it on the NES, but uh, perhaps I did. Either way, Man, those GameStop stickers, they are all over the place. Good grief. Anyway, it's worth more than $5, so if I have to do a little bit of work to get this cartridge cleaned up, I'm okay with that. So I got me a copy of Burger Time for $5. I also got me a copy of Qbert for $5. Uh, this is a great label. The label's in great shape. And it's not one that I had in my collection, so pretty happy about that. Got a copy of Defender 2 for the NES which is pretty awesome. Now, I recall playing Defender often, but I do not recall playing Defender 2. So I I would be absolutely interested in giving that a shot. A sports title I didn't have, Bo Jackson's Baseball, to add to the collection. He had several copies of these. I was able to find the best copy uh, of them all and add it to my collection. He let me, it's so nice to me. He just let me pick, and through, pick through the entire box 
And, you know, if there were multiples, he let me pick out the best copy. Really appreciate that guy. Wheel of Fortune, uh, Family Edition. I needed to add this to my collection, and for $5, I was happy to do so. Destination Earth Star by Acclaim. This particular copy, or this particular game, I wasn't too familiar with, uh, so I was pretty excited. Turns out it's incredibly common. I don't remember playing it. Uh, maybe I should look up gameplay. Maybe it'll, it'll jar some of my memories. And then I was actually shocked that when I go uh, when I go shopping, I take a portable version of my database with me to look and see what I already own in my collection. As much as I would love to say that I've memorized everything that is in my collection, that just simply won't happen. So I keep my database with me so that when I go shopping, I don't accidentally buy duplicates. Warning, it happens anyway. <laughs> uh, that's how I come up with duplicates nowadays. But... Um, I was shocked when my database said that I didn't own this game, uh, so I bought it, thinking that, okay, well, this is going to be one of those duplicates. Sure enough, I don't own it. What? I don't have a copy of Buyability in my collection? Well, that's been fixed now. I now have a copy. So, very happy about that. And because the games were, uh, you know, today's version of cheap, I went ahead and bought even more NES titles to add to the collection. Heavy Shredden being one of them, snowboarding game. I don't remember ever playing this game uh, before, so this might be a new play for me. We got Chris Everett and Ivan Lendl, t top players tennis. Now, I've tried to buy this game a couple of times already and have failed every time. In other words, uh, live auction or something like that. Uh, somebody beat me to it. So for five dollars, well, I that's better than what I was originally trying to get it for. So really happy to add that to my collection. Now I'm gonna mispronounce this because, well, I uh, I don't even know how it's pronounced. Cycross, C cross, not entirely sure. Uh, another common title, and you'll notice that most of these are in fact common titles. But hey, you know what? It fills a hole in my collection. And five dollars a piece, I'll gladly take it. Got a copy of Platoon. Sadly, this is the only copy of Platoon he had available. A little bit dirty, a little bit dinged up. Uh, but it is... What's important to me is the label, right? And yeah, there are nicks in the label, like right here, right here, etc. Uh, all of this can be cleaned out, right? Uh, and as far as the, uh, the game itself, it could be cleaned out too. Uh, but the label is, is hard to produce. What I care about is because I store my games in such a way that only thing you see is here, that's what I care about the most, is to be able to see at a glance, do I have this game or not? So, the fact that this copy of Platoon had a decent end label, uh, made me all sorts of happy. A lot of dirt, wow. That is dirty, dirty. Jordan vs. Bird, one-on-one, -on -one for the NES. I, uh, I don't remember ever playing this. I played a lot of Double Dribble in my day, and I played a whole lot of NBA Jam, which is not on the NES. But uh, Double Dribble was my go-to basketball game for the NES era. Good old classic concentration. Now, this game, from what I remember, is worth more than $5, so to get it for $5, heck yeah, I'm all about it. Got a copy of Bigfoot as well from Acclaim. Uh, again, a little bit of nix on the label, but overall, this cartridge is in great shape. No concerns here for me. As long as it can play. And then a, a game I've never seen before. It looks like a puzzle game of some sort. Loops for the NES. Uh, I've probably seen this before, but back in the day, I didn't really care for puzzle games. Today, I might actually give it a try. It's amazing how my gaming tastes have changed. Over the years. I'm sure anybody who's watching this, your gaming chase tastes have evolved as well. You get older, you get interested in different things, and next thing you know, you're suddenly playing Barbie's Horse Adventures with your daughter and having a good time. Just don't tell anybody else that that's what you've done. <laughs> so, in this box, the same box of um, NES games. Uh, he had a couple of games in there, and I said, are these supposed to be in there? And he said, oh yeah, yeah, I figured I'd bring them, somebody might want them. And I said, well, you know me, I'm gonna want them. 
because I have a lot of people from Europe that actually um, stop by my channel. Uh, and I like to collect things from all over the world, not just what I grew up with. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a heck of a deal if you just take them all. And I said, well, okay. <laughs> Uh, now, keep in mind that they were already in the box where it said everything in the box is $5 each. So if he's looking to knock out more <laughs> off the price, I'm all about it. Especially for a Sega Saturn game. What? <laughs> so this is the PAL region Sega Saturn game, and it's Wipeout for Sega Saturn. How cool is this? I've never seen a European Sega Saturn case before. Uh, this is an official case. You can see the little Sega Saturn logo on it. Uh, and this is from Europe. It's PAL region. And that is bloody fantastic. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I mean, you compare this to ours and we, you know, we get the cracked cases and all that because, you know, it's so fragile. But this is, this is one piece. And it is a, a, a harder plastic. Um... The entire cover is just nice and smooth and totally glued on. And I don't know how these hold up in Europe where you guys are. If you could let me know. Uh, do you have any issues with the label peeling or anything like that? Because these are in great shape. And I am super thrilled to be adding for the very first time a European Sega Saturn game to my collection. But he told me to buy them all, so I did. And the next one that I got is... Uh, Euro, UEFA Euro 96 England uh, from Sega Sports. And again, it's the same thing. Uh, same type of case. Nice. I, I feel like it's rigid. The only thing that I feel is more cardboard or paper uh, is the spine. That spine is just all sorts of flimsy. But uh, it's still, what a great case. I love these cases. I, I'm completely jealous <laughs> that you guys got those cases and we didn't. It's awesome. What's this one? Firestorm Thunderhawk 2. Well, all right then. Nice little 3D. Looks like helicopter combat. That's fantastic. Oh, I love it. I've yet to open these and actually take a look at them. Can you believe all these are complete? I paid less than $5 a piece for them. So, wow. Thank you, Lost Art Guy. I really appreciate it. I'm just in love with these cases. They're so amazing. <laughs> That's so awesome. Uh, you guys are probably thinking to yourself, man, I hate those cases. Well, <laughs> I love them because they're unique. Sega Worldwide Soccer 97. Oh, wow. Look at that manual. Oh, my God. Okay, so first of all, it's landscape, not portrait. And that is a thick boy manual. Wow. <laughs> it's got some meat on it. That's impressive. Love the artwork, too. Awesome. That's a heavy boy. I wonder. And the last one, the one that I'm most excited about. Command and Conquer. <laughs> Command and Conquer for the Sega Saturn. How? Oh, good. It does have the book. Oh, that's, oh it's a two disc. Okay, so that's how they did two discs. What if it was three? Are there any... Three disc Sega Saturn games? I don't recall. How cool is that? Manual's a little bent, but uh, I still think that that's fantastic. I love it. I love this. So the guy that owns Lost Ark, you have made me a very happy guy. <laughs> so thank you for that. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, and they will be put into a good home. And I'm sure my European viewers will also appreciate that I have finally gotten some European Saturn games uh, in my collection. I have a, a lot of Japanese Sega Saturn and a few North American, excuse me, North American Sega Saturn. But these are the first European Sega Saturn games that I have in my collection. And I am super excited. Super excited. Oh my God, they're heavy. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So this happened. Uh, we'll say that it was noon or something like that. Uh, when I stopped by his, his booth and bought all those NES games and, all, and picked up those Saturn games. About 4 p.m. 
I'm walking by that same booth again and he stops me and he says, hey, wait, you, I found a couple more. You can just have them. Excuse me? <laughs> I could just have them? Wow, that's amazing. And he found some Sega Mega Drive games. What? Some Sega Mega Drive games, he said, here, just take them. Now, number one, that's just incredible. And I, I, I know they're not the, the world's most expensive. I don't care. These are my first European Mega Drive games in my collection. I don't care. These are my favorite things. <laughs> um, not because they're free, because I would have bought them. I would have paid money for these. Just because it's something that I don't have in my collection. Uh, and these look incredibly similar to what we have <laughs> for EA cartridges here in the United States. But, uh, oh, that is a big, thick manual. Good grief. There can't be that much to do in this game. But, uh, no, how amazing is that? That he's just, hey, by the way, here, take these. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Who, who am I to complain? <laughs> so he sends me this, and then he also sends me the Winter Olympics one. Now, isn't this interesting for play on Sega Genesis and Sega Mega Drive? Now, this is definitely, clearly, Sega Mega Drive up at the top. Can these be played on either the Genesis or the Mega Drive? There's no region lock? I, I never thought to look for that because, well, I mean, I, I've i never had any uh, out-of-region games. Well, now I do. Uh, that and I have an analog Mega SG, and I know that they'll play... Um, Mega Drive games from Japan, as well as Sega Genesis, and I am very sure that it will play Mega Drive games from Europe as well. So, I didn't have a concern for it, so I never bothered to look it up, but, uh, is there no region lock on the Genesis slash Mega Drive? Very interesting. Either way, thrilled to pieces that these exist in my collection, so thank you very, very much for these two. Uh, I really appreciate it. My very first two PAL Mega Drive games. And they will go also on the PAL shelf that I have. I, um... <laughs> Neo Mecha, I saw that you, uh... That you got a whole box of sealed copies of these. That's so funny because I just managed to have purchased the same thing. <laughs> also while I was at the convention. Hotshots Tennis, get a grip. I like Hotshots Golf. I've never played Hotshots Tennis, uh, but there is no reason why I can't try it now. And by the way, I'm a fan of tennis games, so that was fun for me to pick up. Oh, the face of evil. Uh, when I bought uh, Fox Hunt, Herx Adventures, and... Um, oh, man. And uh, Clock Tower 2. Uh, I conned him into throwing this in for me. Why? Because, well, it's the face of evil, and I don't have this in my collection. So, he threw it in for me. <laughs> Alright, a different booth altogether that I stopped at, and this should... Yep, this is going to wrap up everything that I got at playthrough. Um, gentleman had a quite an extensive collection of uh, Genesis games for sale. Um... And they were at decent prices uh, for their commonality. Um, so I picked them up. I mean, if they're lower than price charting, I'm going to pick them up at conventions. Bulls versus Blazers in the NBA playoffs. Look at that. That is a well-loved manual. But it's still got everything. Pretty awesome. I was able to pick that up. And I paid five bucks for a complete in box Genesis game. Yes, please. NBA Live '96. EA Sports. Four bucks. Champions World Class Soccer. Also complete in box. NBA Action '94. I'm sure he was all sorts of pleased to get these out of his way, too. I mean, there's not many people that would go out of their way to buy stuff like this. And Madden 94. 
Oh boy. This is heavy. Oh god, there's so much here. <laughs> what is this thing for? I mean, is it just a pog? I mean, what's going on? It's cardboard. And it, there's a little punch out. I don't know if I can pick that. Yeah, there you go. A little punch out there. So it's like a little standy. Interesting. A little play cards. That That's for the appropriate year. That's actually pretty awesome. How would you like to own one of those shirts today? Walk around with one of those shirts on. I'm sure people would absolutely comment on how awesome that shirt is. Please note the sarcasm. Here's the prices I paid for everything. I didn't I didn't even bother trying to get them for lower because they're all under price charting. I mean, if I'm happy with the price, I'm going to going to pay. But then he had a Genesis game that wasn't sports that I absolutely needed to have in my collection uh, because I'm a fan. It's BattleTech. I did pay for that one. <laughs> Hey, a little bit of money for that one. Complete in box. The label is fantastic. That is a very shiny label. Which makes me all sorts of happy. Don't know if this was the actual case that it originally belonged in. Um, this appears to be uh, suitable for EA games. Cartridges as well. So this might be an aftermarket... Um, an aftermarket case. I am almost positive of that. But, as long as the cover art is real. And it is. It is absolutely real. That's all I care about. So, got a copy of Battletech. For the Sega Genesis. And I am very, very pleased. Look at those. Insane 16-bit graphics. Excellent. Excellent stuff. So, that was the playthrough convention for me. Uh, like I said, it wasn't a lot. I mean, I got the, the Fox Hunt, the Herx Adventures. That was probably the most exciting grab for me uh, at playthrough. But to be able to fill a bunch of holes, I mean, I got 20 NES games. Uh, for five bucks a piece, I'll take it. Right? I, I got a bunch of Sega Genesis games. I got uh, a bunch of European Mega Drive and Sega Saturn games. Crazy. I was so excited. So excited. But that was, uh... That was, uh... Playthrough Gaming Convention in Raleigh, North Carolina. So, a couple of the local stores that I went to... One is called Retroid Games and Records. You might have heard them, me talking about them in my last video. Uh, where the guy actually wants to uh, buy my Wii U uh, Starlight. And I'm still on the fence. I still don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, but this is the same trip where I picked up a whole lot of Amiga games. And I also picked up some other games as well. Um, I did say that while my primary focus is I'm going to be collecting uh, and have a goal of collecting a PS1 full set by the end of the year... I already know what my next set is going to be that I try to complete, and that's going to be Sega Game Gear. So after, this is my typical route when I go into a retro video game store, I go right to PS1, and I start looking and grabbing, and then I go look for Game Gear. So that's typically what I do, because it's my secondary uh, goal. I don't plan to finish it by the end of the, by the, end of the year, but I still want to get a good start. And uh, he had a couple of Game Gear games, like Chuck Rock here. That I paid $7 for. He also had uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula for the Game Gear. Sony product there on the Sega system. And uh, GP Writer for the Game Gear. But as I said, my primary focus was definitely going for PlayStation 1. And of course, I... Took as many PlayStation 1 games that I needed to add to my collection and bought all of them. <laughs> so I got the Unholy War. I love the cover art. Pretty awesome. I've never played this game. It actually looks kind of interesting. Gives me Dungeon Keeper vibes. Mike 
Titan boxing. Uh, if you're going to collect for PS1, my strong recommendation is that you please do yourself a favor and buy just some empty jewel cases. <laughs> uh, Team Rocket Rescue? I, I was surprised I didn't have this already. Uh, I'm going to keep that open for a second because I also managed to get the Greatest Hits version. And there is the differences between the discs. There you go. Formula One. Just regular for Formula One by Cygnosis. There's actually quite a few Formula One games for the console that I don't have. And because I'm going for it, not just a complete set, but also a complete Greatest Hits uh, set, I had to pick up some pricier Greatest Hits games, such as Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider 2, and Dave Mira of Freestyle BMX. Making sure the whole time that it did actually contain the Greatest Hits disc. And they all did. So that makes me happy. So, not a bad round. Also, keep in mind, I bought my Amiga games uh, on the same trip. So, uh, I was pretty spent <laughs> after that day. That was an expensive trip. But happy to put more games in the collection. I am that this much closer to a full set of PS1. Same trip, different store. Uh, went to McKay's in Winston-Salem. Now, my wife was with me this day, and I just told you what I go through as soon as I go into a, a retro video game store. I go to PS1, and then I go to Game Gear, and that's, that's the order that I hit. My wife goes immediately for Wii. Just, that's her goal, is to help me complete the Wii set. <laughs> Great! That's something I want to do, and something that I will get done eventually. So, I, you know, she does her thing, and I just pay for whatever. <laughs> uh, but it's awesome that she, you know, that she helps me. Uh, and she's kind of taken on the Wii as her own little project. I will get all of the unique Wii games that you don't already own. Great. Perfect. So, what did she pick up? Well, she picked up a copy of Space Chimps. With no manual. That's sad. Mastermind, or Mega Mind, I'm sorry. Mega Team Unite. That is complete in box. New Hospital. One of the last games alphabetically, I'm sure. Jelly Belly. Ballistic Beans. Complete. Nerf and Strike. Now, there is a Nerf and Strike, and then there is a gun bundle uh, that comes with a Nerf gun. This is the standalone version that only uses the Wiimote, uh, and I know that it's the standalone because it actually has the UPC here. Now, I could be totally mistaken. Maybe the gun bundle also carries the same UPC. I'm not entirely sure, but we were able to pick that one up. Ice Age, Continental Drift by Arctic Games. Now, um, I'm sorry, by Activision. Arctic Games is part of the title. Uh, there are three different Ice Age games on the Nintendo Wii, and I own zero of them. Well, I own one now. So, that'll work. Yay! The joys of collecting for full sets. You get all the games. <laughs> including Pajama Party, Charm Girls Club. Oh, help. <sighs> Why is it that every time I find something like this, it's always in the best condition, the most complete, everything's perfect? Ah, uh, well. Jeep Thrills? I wonder if this came as a, uh, a bundle. DSi games. I'm not sure if this ever came with a wheel. Like, if it has a wheel bundle. Where the Wild Things Are by WB Games. This was also available on the Xbox 360 and the PS3. I didn't have it for Wii. Now, Glacier 3, The Meltdown, a zoo title. I, every time I see zoo, I think immediately of uh, shovelware. But then, for the Nintendo Switch, they come up with uh, shmups that I actually want to play, like 
I, I think they just recently did the the Raiden. Was it the Raiden 4 remaster? So I don't know. Maybe my opinion of Zoo needs to change. Maybe it's it's me, not them type of thing. Uh, and to be honest with you, the game actually looks kind of cool. Like a, maybe a, a Twisted Metal ripoff. Uh, I can't call it a ripoff. I don't even know. Mean of me to say. And then the last week game she picked up, Planet 51, the game by Sega. It is complete, but man, Fido had lunch. That makes me sad. All in all, she looked through hundreds of Wii games. This is what we were able to find. <laughs> oh, it's becoming harder and harder to find games that you don't already own. And that sounds like first world problems, and I get it. But when you're trying to go for a full set, you don't want to pay eBay prices. Ugh. Or even just pay shipping on a single title. So I went, I actually hit up Atari while I was at McKay's uh, and noticed the cheap prices for the Atari games that they were offering. So I picked up quite a few. Frogs and Flies. And what you see on here is the price that I did pay. You can't haggle at a national chain like McKay's. They're not really national. Uh, McKay's is kind of like, uh, if you ever heard of Half Price Books, Second and Charles, they're in the same vein. Frogs and Flies. Riddle of the Sphinx. With a label maker? I don't know what's going on there. I did get a Coleco game, Venture. I did not pay $5. I paid $2.95. I played this game growing up, and I'm very happy. They had like six copies of this game, so believe it or not, the game I'm about to show you, this was their best copy. <laughs> but I remember playing it growing up, so... <laughs> Fishing Derby by Activision. I had a lot of fun with this game. It also had the best end label as well. I think there was one with a better cover label, but the end label was just in really bad shape. Uh, $2.95 for that one. You ever want to collect games on the cheap? Pick Atari. Well, pick Atari 2600. Don't pick Jaguar and think you're going to buy games on the cheap. Joust for the 2600? Didn't have this in my collection. I do now. Amadar. Never heard of it. Don't even know what it's about. It looks like Donkey Kong. Um, I, I know it's not Donkey Kong, but man. You got the Princess Peach, Mario, the painter, not the plumber, and Donkey Kong. Um, and is, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what it reminds me of, so. And then I got the uh, ever-controversial <laughs> game uh, for World Records, Dragster. <laughs> I, I just needed it in my collection, so. And, and it was worth the $3 that I wanted to pay. So, Dragster by Activision. The ever controversial cannot be beaten because, well, dude cheated. <laughs> so there you go. A couple of cartridge games to add to my collection. All for less than $3. I'm pretty excited about this. But as always, with any video game store, if they have PS1, that's where I'm going first. And this is the last thing that I have to show you guys via pickups. I was able to pick up a copy of Army Men World War Land, Sea, and Air. Um, I love the Army Men franchise. I thought it was so well done, and I enjoyed them all. Now, have I played them all? No, not yet. Have I played this one? Nope, not yet. But I can now. So I am pleased that I was able to get this game added to my collection. Uh, March Madness 98. Uh, if memory serves, this particular game costs a little bit more than what I paid for it, so I was happy to add that to the collection. This is called Streak Hoverboard Racing. I, I had to look at the spine real quick because I can't see the name on the actual cover. I agree. Uh, remember what I said about make sure you have plenty of replacement cases? 
well. <laughs> this was exciting. Uh, why is this exciting? Because I'm a dork, that's why. No, um, sports games. Greatest hits version of sports games on the uh, PlayStation 1. They're actually hard to find. There's a Madden 98. There's an NHL face-off. And then there's that NFL Blitz 2001, which we won't even talk about. So, to find an NHL face-off, just the very first one. Now, Black Label version of this game is a long box. So to have this as a greatest hits, yeah, I knew it was going to be pricey. I didn't know it was going to be that pricey. Ugh, golly. But it's got the right disc. Uh, I just paid $12 for a sports game. How does that make you feel? Speed for Speed High Stakes Greatest Hits. This was exciting. I I had it disc only. And I, I hate, hate disc only CD based games. <laughs> uh, here, let me show you my hatred for them. This is every loose CD based game that I own. Just chilling on the spindle. They go anywhere from Wii to Xbox 360, Xbox One, PlayStation 3. It's all the stuff. And I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> so, I don't want to add to the spindle. I hate it. So, if I can replace it, and it's worth it for me to replace it, I will replace it. That's why I picked that up. Uh, another long box turned greatest hits, and it also had a black label jewel case variant as well. So, to say that they've uh, reprinted this over and over again, yeah, they did. So what makes this so expensive? It's a greatest hits. Everybody hates the green spine and blah, blah, blah. Listen, I like collecting greatest hits because whatever bugs were present in the black label version have been fixed for the greatest hits reprint. So I'm not saying there are bugs in the original Need for Speed, but if there were, they've likely been fixed if they caught them between the black label release and the... Uh, Greatest Hits variant print. So I want you to keep this in mind, okay? Eleven ninety five for this. And why is this three ninety five? Like what? NHL Face Off ninety seven is three dollars and ninety five cents, but the greatest hits of NHL Face Off is eleven ninety five. What? <laughs> Come again? I don't get it either. So yeah, we're just gonna go. We're gonna go with it. This is the only one where they had the disc behind the counter, so I couldn't look, but as soon as he put the disc in, I had to make sure that it was Greatest Hits. And it is. Need for Speed 2 Greatest Hits. For the PS1. That is a huge chunk of uh, Greatest Hits to add to my collection. Thank goodness. I am very pleased with this, and it makes me all sorts of happy. Because, again, I do want all the Greatest Hits. I don't know what the expensive Greatest Hits games are, aside from Toy Story 2 and NFL Blitz 2001. But I can tell you that I've already gotten a lot of the big ones out of the way. I have Silent Hill Greatest Hits. I have Castlevania Symphony of the Night Greatest Hits. Um, what other Greatest Hits are there that I need to collect and keep my eye out for that is really expensive? I got the Driver Driver 2 combo pack that's Greatest Hits. I have Xenogears Greatest Hits. Question mark. Hang on. Yes. I have Zeno Gears Greatest Hits. Um, you know, what am I missing? Let me know in the comments below. And with that said, I still can't explain this. <laughs> I don't know. What's my favorite pickup of this whole entire thing? Well, it's got to be, without a doubt, the European Saturn and Mega Drive games that was gifted to me. Uh, well, the Mega Drive games were gifted to me. The Saturn games I purchased, but I felt... A need to purchase um, by Lost Ark Video Games. Uh, thank you again, sir. I, I greatly appreciate you very much. But that's going to do it for me. I appreciate you guys coming by, picking out my pickups for the week. Uh, next week, I'm expecting a lot of limited run titles. The blind boxes finally got shipped. So I'm still waiting on those to get to me. Uh, so a lot of limited run titles. And this weekend, this Saturday, I'm going to a Raleigh Retro Meetup. Uh, at a brewing company of all places uh, in, in the Raleigh area. So I will be going there and likely looking for, you guessed it, PlayStation 1 and Game Gear games, but that doesn't mean that I won't also find some other games from other systems 
along the way. That's it from me. Thanks. You guys take care. Don't forget to subscribe. Have fun. Bye.